So today we start with a summary of Gita, chapter two, Gita Saramsha or Sankhya Yoga. So Bhagavad Gita uh, was written by Lord Ganesha and Vedvyas Muni had narrated that. He told him and Lord Ganesha had written it. So chapter two, it opens with um, Arjuna being very helpless. He's, he's put down his Gandiva bow and he's sitting with his hands uh, on his head and he's saying, oh, in the battle of Kurukshetra. And uh, he says, oh, Krishna, I can't find a fight. You know, it's uh, difficult. And our most beloved Lord Sri Krishna's advice will commence from second chapter. Chapter one, he did not speak anything, right? So he's going to drive home the point that we all have to perform our respective karma action. We can't just sit. That is what is going to lead us to salvation, ultimate salvation, right? So we should never leave our action. A swadharma. Swadharma means duty, our duty. We should never. And then otherwise what will happen, you know, we will be able, we will pay penalty in form of bondage. We will be coming here, birth after birth, birth after birth, and we will remain uh, shackled in the cycle of birth and death. So chapter two, it talks about three very, very important points. One is about individual soul, that is Jivatma. And then uh, how is its nature, how it exists and all. Then it talks about our karma and it all talks talks about a person with a steady mind. Stita pragna. We are not stita pragna. Stita pragna means having balanced mind. So our Lord Krishna is going to convey to Arjuna that you have fought so many battles. Why is your mind so weakened? Huh? Why? Because you are not getting the inability to discriminate between right and wrong. Yes, we are all bound by our uh, blood relations. Yes, they say blood is thicker than water. Yeah. Um, uh, many of us at all cost, we want to protect our kith and kin, right? We want to, uh, but there are, there are very few who are following the path of truth. So at our, at our soul, you know, at the time of uh, leaving this body, it only changes its physical structure. The soul remains the same, right? It goes with it. But the body changes and um, our Lord Krishna is going to explain all that in this chapter about our soul, the individual soul, right? So if we need to have a good life, fine life, then our deeds have to be impeccable. Our actions have to be really good. Our thought, our word, our actions should be in unison. Never think that I'm thinking inside, so who will know? Krishna knows, Paramatma knows, he's in the heart, he's writing down, noting down every point. So we have to perform everything according to the Shastra, proper uh, deeds. So the Krishna is also going to convey that our uh, duty should be totally free from attachment. And then Arjuna wants him to explain the various qualities of a person who is in complete sita pragna or balance. So it actually emphasizes, second chapter actually emphasizes a lot on the nature of our soul. So this is very important. That is why it's called Gita Saramsh. The whole of Gita, if you put together, second chapter is there. So if you understand second chapter, you have almost got everything. So let's see how it goes. So a recap of yesterday's one. Arjuna did not want to fight for five reasons. He said compassion. Krishna says we are not the body. He says there is no enjoyment after killing them. He says you fight, you will either get heaven if you win or die and uh, die and go to heaven. Or if you win, you get kingdom. Then he says, uh, this, this is really sinful, uh, you know, of these activities are really sinful and I'm, I'm scared of that. He says, no, anything done in devotion is not considered sin. Then he says, family tradition will be uh, uh, destroyed. He says, you have to be a role model to prevent Varna Shankara. And then he's, he's not able to decide whether to fight or not. So he says, you should serve the Lord with firm determination. So he's thinking Kula Dharma or Kshatriya Dharma. So let go, let God do. If I do not let go, I'll be frustrated, right? If I have to let go, we have to let go of everything. If I let go, I will panic. But if I let go and let the God in, let the God do it, then I don't have to worry, right? I will be reassured. Now, coming back to the question, what is the name of Krishna's conch shell? Please raise your hand. Quick, quick, okay. It's a long chapter, so we have to be very quick. Uh, or you can just put it in the chat box. I can see that. 
um, yes. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Purva, Purva Mataji, I think. Panchajanya is the correct answer. Very good. Okay. We'll, let's be very quick, okay? Okay, what are the five reasons which Arjuna gave for not fighting? Quick. You all have done yesterday, so you should know. Or you can unmute yourself and uh, say very quickly. Yes, family traditions, correct. Compassion, sin, yes. loss of family. Yes. No enjoyment. Yes. Sin, yes. Mohan Prabhuji, compassion. Pankaj Prabhuji, sin, yes. And? Indecision. Compassion, no enjoyment. Sin, family traditions, and indecision. Yes, sir. Arjuna was asked to fight with his own guru and grandfather. Has anybody in history made that sacrifices like that? So we can see that as father and son, Prahalad, right? Prahalad uh, disobeyed his, uh, dis not disobeyed, but he went on to pray for, sacrifice for Krishna. Then Hariya Shavas and Bahula uh, Shavas, uh, these were uh, ones, they disobeyed their father Daksh. And on Narada's advice, they went for Tapasya. Chatur Kumara, Sanaka, Sanandana, Sanatana, Sanat Kumara, they also, when Brahma wanted to create, the, they, he created these four Kumaras for, um, you know, to increase the creation, process of creation. But these uh, four uh, Brahmacharis, they said, no, 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 we don't want to get into all this. We will remain Brahmacharis. We don't want to get entangled in this material affairs. And Brahma was very angry. They went and they did uh, tapasya. Then older brother, younger brother, Ravana and Vibhishana. Vibhishana went uh, with Ram. Then Shukra, Bali Maharaj, he did not listen to his guru and he sacrificed uh, to Vaman Dev. Then uh, Yagnik Brahman Patnis, they all went to the forest. They left their husbands and went. Right? There are so many, so many of them who sacrificed for Krishna. So, if Arjuna was asked to fight his own guru and grandfather, we have so many in the history, those who have fought, right? Okay, coming back to quiz, what is the name of chapter 2? We are doing chapter 2 now. We can't waste time quickly. B, correct. Correct, correct. Who, who told first? Uh, Akanksha Mataji B. Okay, very good. It is the correct answer, B. That is right. Sankhya Yoga. Okay. Let's move on to the first shloka. Please raise your hand to do the translation. And one by one, each devotee should do it. Sanjaya Uvacha Tam Tatha Kripaya Vishtam Ashrupurna Kolekshanam Vishidanta idam vakyam uvacha madhusudanaha. Yes, Kamlesh. Seeing Arjuna full of compassion, his mind depressed, his eyes full of tears, Madhusudana, Krishna spoke the following words. Yeah. So now you can see Arjuna is completely full of compassion. Now Madhusudana has started speaking. So Arjuna is seeing uh, Drona, um, Tarya and Bhishma and he feels very sad. He is in compassion. He's, he says it's better to beg. I cannot kill them. So on hearing this, who is the happiest person here? Who is the happiest person to see that Arjuna doesn't want to fight? Dhritarashtra. <laughs> yes. So he now thinks, oh wow, great, good. I am rest assured. Now he won't fight. He will go away. The kingdom will be still under my control. But his dream is going to completely shatter. Why? Because Sanjaya said, Arjuna who is in the chariot, on the chariot, is fully of full with full compassion. Uh, he is very emotional right now. But after hearing that, Vacha Madhusudana means Krishna is going to say, now Dhritarashtra comes and his BP is rising. What is Krishna going to do? He knows what Krishna can do. So is he going to bring the situation under control? What can he do? Now his illusion 
is going to break his kingdom or his kingdom what is going to happen my my bhram or my illusion is going to shatter now let's see shri bhagavan uvacha kuta swa kashmalam idam vishame sam upasthitam anarya jushtam aswargyam akirtikaram arjuna yes dhan lakshmi mata ji yes mata ji the supreme personality of god had said my dear arjuna how have these impurities come upon you they are not at all benefiting a man who knows the value of life they lead not to higher planets but to impact to infamy yes thank you mr hari krishna so, mataji hari krishna when does lord krishna begin to instruct arjuna only after arjuna surrendered to krishna as a disciple Arjuna understood that his affection for family members and his wish to protect them they were all causes of his uh, confusion right so he is asking krishna please help me please make a definite solution he is offering himself to krishna now he is offering so he wants to stop this friendly talk now it is going to be master and disciple now everything is going to become little serious now arjuna wants to talk seriously before his spiritual master so arjuna says you may get a bad name if you are a, see if you are a good a good student or a reciter or a good team player and you suddenly get nervous what do our teachers say that is come on don't do that you can do it come on go ahead if you back out now what will people say come on move move out come on keep doing it so when when you know when we are having lot of attachment we lose our discrimination between what is right and what is wrong that is what is showing so that is what shows when we talk when arjuna is talking so let's see what he says now arjuna surrenders to krishna um who is going to do please keep raising your hand so that it's quick purva yes please purva may i do mata ji may i do mata ji asharam sharma yes please harishna now i am confused about my duty and have lost all my all composure because of my early weakness in this condition i am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me now i am your disciple and a soul surrender unto you please instruct me hari krishna yeah. hari krishna thank you so this is a very very important shloka of uh, chapter 2 karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichhami tvam dharma sammodha cheta yachreyasya nishchitam bruhitan me शिष्यस्ते हम शादी मां त्वां प्रपन्नम वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दिस इज द टर्निंग पॉइंट ऑफ भगवत गीता हियर कृष्णास उपदेश और सर्मन इज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट आफ्टर दिस बिकॉज अर्जुन हैज फॉरगॉटन हिज ड्यूटी एज अ क्षत्रिय एंड नाउ ही इज एडमिटिंग यस कृष्णा आई एडमिट आई एम आई एम आई एम माइजर आई एम आई एम फॉरगेटिंग माय ड्यूटी कार्पण्य दोषो पहत स्वभाव माय माय नाइट नेचुरल ड्यूटी आई एम फॉरगेटिंग कृष्णा i am becoming miser therefore lord uh, shila prabhupada in his lecture uh, once he gave lecture in johannesburg he he told to become a disciple means no more argument when you are friendly you can have some argument between friends but when it is uh, disciple and guru no more argument therefore now arjuna is admitting actually my behavior should be of like uh, kshatriya but uh, i am not doing it i am kripana karpanya dosho pahata so kripana means one who does not properly use his position like if a man is very rich for example right and he has lot of money but he is not using his money simply looking at that money what's the point he is called kripana similarly arjuna he is very powerful he can fight he is a kshatriya but he is denying his ability so he is thinking i am become kripana that's what says like rich man has got money he does not spend his kripana similarly arjuna also so if you were in a school for example and you have a doubt who do you approach then you have a doubt who will clear your doubt who clears your doubt if you have a problem teacher mata ji teacher yeah so what should arjuna do go to a person who is superior to him who better than krishna so just like you know if you are sick and you go to a doctor and you ask you say what to do doctor i am suffering from so and so disease that's your duty you have to tell you can't do your own treatment right you have to go to a person who knows so krishna um, arjuna when he is perplexed or confused in his duties he has to go to somebody who is superior to him in knowledge so ask him what to do who better than krishna so he is asking 
Prichamitvam means please tell me. I'm asking you, Krishna, because it is my duty. I'm falling in my duty. I'm faulty. So this is not good. I must ask somebody who's superior to me. So I'm asking you. So now Arjuna surrendered. He realizes he's being weak. He's taking shelter of Krishna. The, the relationship has changed. Now it is disciple and spiritual master and the knowledge will be transferred. So Krishna, Arjuna is asking Lord Krishna. So this is the story here. Here also he prays earnestly to uh, Lord Vishnu in the first picture. This is the, the, the elephant, uh, Gajendra. This is um, in Srimad Bhagavatam also the story is there about Gajendra and there is Gajendra Stuti also prayers of Gajendra in Srimad Bhagavatam where he prays to Lord Vishnu. Anybody knows about this story? Hare Krishna. Yeah, you know? Hare Krishna. Okay, so um, this is Brahm. Second picture is uh, Brahma Vil uh, Vimohana Leela. This is how Brahma gets into Brahma. He, he thinks that the Lord is, uh, is he really Lord, supreme personality of Godhead? He thinks. And uh, Gajendra's story, I will do you, if you want, I will tell very quickly. Yes or no? Please tell. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. okay. So I'll tell very quickly. This is a big chapter, actually. So um, Gajendra, he is, the, uh, he is the central character in this story. His name, previous name was King Indra Dyumna in his previous life. So he left his kingdom and he started meditating in the forest on Vishnu. So uh, one day, um, a saint came to the hut of uh, King Indra Dyumna and King did not see his arrival. He was meditating, right? So the saint was very, um, saint, the, the saint felt he was insulting him. So he cursed him to become an elephant. Now, as an elephant, he was roaming around in the forest. Then he saw the king of uh, a big herd of elephants were coming. The king started challenging him. So Indra Dumna as an elephant started fighting and he won. So now he, beca he, oh, he became the king of those herd of elephants and his name was Gajendra, king of elephants. Now, because animal instincts took over him, so he became very egoistic and very arrogant. So one day he was drinking water in, uh, in the river and a crocodile um, immediately grabbed uh, Gajendra's leg and refused to leave it. They all tried, all the elephants were around him, but slowly each one left and went away. Now he didn't know what to do. He tried everything, but the crocodile was not leaving him. Then he realized, suddenly he remembered that he used to meditate upon Lord Vishnu and only Lord Vishnu can save him. So he prayed to Hari Vishnu. Soon Lord Vishnu appeared. The way he did Stuti, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, it is written beautiful prayers. So he, he Gajendra, he plucked the lotus flower and offered to Lord Vishnu. And he did a lot of prayers. And then immediately he was gripped from the grip of uh, crocodile. He was released from the grip of crocodile. And um, Vishnu came down to the earth to protect uh, Gajendra, the elephant, from the clutches of crocodile, right? Uh, that crocodile was also a Gandharva Muhu and he was he achieved liberation. So some say that it's a sim symbolism also like for example the soul is like elephant, egoistic soul. As long as we are young, healthy, wealthy, we feel people, many people love us and we become very egoistic. The crocodile represents death. So when, which ends everything, right? When we are caught in the jaws of death, there is no one to save us. No one. Friends flee, relatives disappear, everybody goes. We are alone when we have to die. So our own body fails us miserably. Body also does not support. So like uh, elephant in the story, the only solution from suffering is to turn towards the Lord, turn towards Krishna. In the moment of utter surrender, God will come rushing to help us. Only God will help us and release us from the clutches of death. And that is liberation, moksha. Uh, Brahma Vimohana Leela, I will tell you after um, I'm able to finish. Everybody knows this picture. Who is he? Who is this young, small boy? Lord, Lord Narasimha and Pralab. Very nice, very nice. And the right side, who are they? Who are Ram? Ram and? Anuman. Anuman. So we all know about these stories. I'll tell in detail after the class. Now let's see. Uh, who will read, please? Yes, please. Next one. Yes, please. Kashvi, please. Yes. 
Yes. O descendant of Bharata, at that time Krishna smiling in the midst of both the armies spoke the following words to the grief stricken Arjuna. So, Tamuva Acha Hrushi Keshaha Prahasan Niva Bharata Tenayo Rubayor Madhye Vishidanta Maidam Vachaha Now, Tamuva Acha Hrushi Keshaha So, Rishi Kesha means who? Master of mind and senses. Who is Rishi Kesha? Krishna. He is the master. Master of senses. So, Guda, 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 Guda means sleep. Guda, Guda means sleep and one who conquers the sleep is called Guda Kesha. That is Sleep also means ignorance. So Arjuna had already conquered sleep and ignorance because he was following the guidelines of Dharma by elders, right? And Krishna also. So people conquer sleep but cannot conquer ignorance. But Arjuna had actually conquered both. So they were all talking the Rishikesha and Gudakesha. Rishikesha Krishna and Gudakesha is Arjuna. Gudakesha is somebody who has conquered sleep and ignorance. And Rishikesha is master of senses, Lord Krishna. So Till now they were friends. Now he is smiling. That friend has chosen him to be a disciple. So he is now in a superior position. So now Arjuna has accepted him as the master. So he is going to tell what has to be done. So a difficult decision making situation. The takeaway from this shloka is. Whenever you have a difficult decision making situation. Please consult an authority. A perfect authority. Right? Krishna's quality as a great teacher. He is not scolding, but here he is just smiling right now. So now what he does? Let's see. What does Goda Kesha mean? What does Goda Kesha mean? A, B, C, D. C. Very good. Very good. Yes, C. Very nice. Okay. That's correct. Now let's see the second one. Rishi Kesha. What does Rishi Kesha mean? Master of, Master of senses. Master of senses. Excellent. Who, who said that? Kamlesh Prabhuji? Yes, Mother. Very nice, Haribol. Yes, Master of senses. Very nice. Yes. Who would read, please? One of you, please take up. Yes, Kamlesh Prabhuji. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. The blessed Lord said, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Yeah. Now Krishna's quality as a great teacher. He says, bend but don't break. Don't do this. He has nothing to lament about, he says. <laughs> so Lord, he at once took you as a teacher and he's chastising Arjuna. He's scolding Arjuna. What? Indirectly calling him a fool. What are you doing? You are talking like a learned uh, man, but you do not know. One who is learned, he, he should know that he is not the body, he is just a soul. So you should not be lamenting or crying at any stage, right? For this body, not in this living or dead condition, you should be crying about this body. Because he was, Arjuna was con continuously lamenting for something which is not even uh, worthy of lamenting, right? The body is uh, there today. Tomorrow it will go away, vanquish today or tomorrow. So body is not as important as the soul. So the moment one is uh, one understands that there is nothing to lament about, right? That's what Lord Krishna is trying to tell him. So Lord Krishna is the best teacher. He he listened, right? First whole chapter he was very quiet. That's a very good quality of a teacher. Then he gives knowledge of Gita only when Arjuna is ready to surrender. Till then, he is not telling anything. He is not saying, okay, wait, Arjuna, I will tell you. No. He let Arjuna surrender. He smiles. There is no anger. He, he says, bend, but do not break. He answered all the questions in chapter 2, very in short, but immediately. He kept encouraging Arjuna throughout. He is giving Arjuna the choice. He is telling, he is giving his advice, but in the end, he says in 18th chapter, do as you like. There is no force. Right? So that is what a very good quality of a teacher. So whenever Lord Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita, it says, see, see Bhagavanu Vacha. Why not Krishna Vacha? Anybody who can tell this answer? Why, Krishna, why is Sri Bhagavanu Vacha? Nowhere will you see uh, Sri Krishna Vacha. Yes, Srinidhi Mataji. Uh, because uh, 
krishna is uh, although uh, krishna is uh, uh, krishna is also finally uh, avatar of vishnu he uh, finally every the, the every word that the lord says is actually coming from the source of the, the universal truth so it is shri bhagwan uvacha okay thank you kusum lakta mata ji you want to say something or you have raised your hand yes he is the supreme personality of the god yes yeah. he is supreme personality of godhead yes um actually who is bhagwan let's see. mata ji we use word krishna for a lot of other go also na for the color black is krishna for yeah true true mata ji oh, now here we are talking krishna about... is not being mentioned mentioned as bhagwan bhagwan why we are mentioning as bhagwan we'll come to know now who is bhagwan aishwarasya samagrasya virasya yashasa shriya ज्ञान वैराग्य योजनाशर मुनि लिटरेचर एंड ही one even if we have 1 million in the bank that's all we have but krishna has everything all is krishna's only so he has got everything we might have little bit of beauty but krishna has all complete beauty we have little strength he has all the strength in the world he has all knowledge that no one of us none of us have wealth he has got the whole srishti whereas we have limited amount right in chapter 7 he says जगतरी Animate, inanimate, everything is controlled by God. Next is strength. He is all strength or virasya. He kidnapped Rukmani outright in front of everyone, and he went fearlessly. He was going, taking her, her, her away. Yashasvi. He is Yashasvi. There is no one who doesn't know him. He is so, so, so famous. Beauty, nothing to beat him. In Brahma Samhita, it is written, right? Venum konantam maravinda dayal taksham. He is. so adept in playing playing the flute he has got lotus like petal eyes varahavatam samasitam budha sundarangam his head is decked with peacock feathers such beautiful he looks so beautiful lot of attraction kandar pakoti kamaniya vishesha shobham he has got so much of charm millions and millions of cupid together also of no use right that kind of charm he has govindam adi purusham tam ham bhajami i brahma dev says i worship such govinda who is so 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 beautiful now he has got such great knowledge he is telling everything in bhagavad gita you can definitely say he has knowledge right <laughs> he says in uh, chapter 9 maya tatam idam sarvam jagad vyakta murti na matsani sarva bhutani nacham teshwa vastitaha he says the whole entire universe i am pervaded in it all are in me but i am not in them so you can imagine like it's like you know prime minister you can just crude example prime minister he is running the whole show right he is taking care of everything but he cannot be with each one of us similarly krishna also he is running the whole show but he cannot be running around here and there right so uh, someone asked like why bhagavad gita was not told to duryodhana he could have improved sure yes he could have but was he in that mode to receive did he have that kind of knowledge was he in mode of goodness no krishna also went for peace talks did he accept did he take it positively nothing next is renunciation no one can beat krishna's renunciation you can see uh, he tells in chapter 18 to krishna that i have told you now you decide what you feel is right so um shila prabhu says that you know he accepted uh, to become the charioteer of arjuna who will want if i tell you uh, 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 suppose i say here uh, aarti mata ji please ask your uh, child to become a driver will you like it 
They say, no, 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 I want my child to become a, 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 an engineer or a doctor. Or another mother, ji, okay, can, can any mother ji, or Prabhuji, I'll say, make your uh, child uh, maybe a servant. No, 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 I want them to become this. Now he has become a charity, imagine. He's, he doesn't have anything, no issues. I can become a charity for Arjuna. That is the kind of opulence of renunciation he had. He never thought, okay, I'm the supreme personality of God. And what the hell, I should not be doing this. No, he's got full six opulences. These are all six opulences. He exhibits the highest renunciation. He, he will do anything for the devotee. He sometimes, you know, he detaches himself from, uh, you know, uh, loving associates of Vrindavan. He gives so much of freedom to decide what to do, what not to do. If not, why, you know, we are somewhat drawn towards the bad habits if he would not have given us freedom. We have got little freedom and that we misuse it. So whoever has got this six shada, shada guna, we say, he is called Bhagavan. And he is only Krishna. If you look in Shastras, you look in Vedas, only Sri Krishna has been called Bhagavan. No one else. So you can see that. See, he has got all beauty, all wealth, all fame, all strength, all knowledge and all sacrifice. Okay, so our vision is not perfect. So how can we see Bhagwan, right? So let's say you go on a drive. Okay, so uh, what do you see in this picture? Please tell me. You have to raise your hand or you have to um, tell me, um, unmute yourself and tell me quickly. What do you see in this picture? Um, anyone? Yes, Vaishnavi Mat. Sunset or sunrise? Sunset or sunrise. What else can you see? Mataji. Mataji, water waves and sky. Mataji. Yes, sky, yes. Mataji seems to be like a horizon. Yeah. Horizon, okay, yeah. And? Peace. So and sky. Yes. You can see some clouds, land, yes, correct. Sky. Very good. Shadow. Let's go closer. We will go a little closer, okay? Let's see Peaceful what we can see. Peaceful environment, Mataji. Yes? Peaceful environment. Peaceful environment. Yeah, very true. Now we go a little closer. What, what, what do you see now, okay? What is that? Tree. Tree. Now you saw a tree. We go further closer to the tree. We are going very, we are driving closer to, to the tree and we go right near the tree now. What do you see now? Parrot. Parrot. What is he doing? He's having a fruit. Fruit. Yes, it is eating fruit. Yes. So, our, our, our vision is not perfect. We see something from par. We can't see the tree and the parrot till we go closer. We went little closer, we could see the tree. When we go very, very close, we could see the parrot in the tree. Right? Otherwise, from far off, we cannot see. Same is the situation with us. When we talk about this light from far you see supreme personality of uh, godhead he come he can be seen in three ways like what from far off bhagwan you can see as an effulgence lot of light that's brahman brahman realization when you go little closer 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 you see 400 paramatma narayana and then you go closer closer close closer, closer much closer you see bhagwan lord sri krishna two handed form right for example, you have two friends. They are very new. You know just their name. You don't know them very well. You don't even know where they live. You don't know about their parents, etc. Then you go a little closer, start talking to them, become very familiar with them. You start asking. You get to know them, right? A little bit. Then slowly, slowly, you start going home also. So now you know her completely well. Similarly, the more closer we go to God, the more details we come to know about God. So first light is, Brahman, then Chaturbhuja Paramatma and then Shyam Sundar in form of peacock. Now Krishna is watching everyone. He is in our heart in form of four-handed Paramatma. He knows everything we are doing. So what is Krishna's favorite food by the way? Who can tell? Krishna's Makhan, favorite Makhan, Makhan. Makhan Chor. He is called, he's called Makhan Chor also, right? Very naughty that way. He loves butter. So once Krishna, you know what happened? He went to Gopi's house and he stole butter to eat. And that, the, that's fine. But he broke all the pots. So Gopis complained to Mama Yashoda. She said, okay, do one thing. Hang it up. 
Krishna will uh, not be able to reach it. But Krishna still went ahead and he still broke uh, all and stole. So now Yashoda said, do one thing. Switch off all the lights. Then he won't be able to see in the dark. Krishna still stole. They thought because his jewelry was shining, that is why he could see. So Mother Yashoda removed all his jewelry also. And then again, he one day he uh, stole. They went to see how he could have uh, stolen. You know what they saw? The full effulgence of Krishna was emerging from his body. So much of effulgence that you can see on the screen. That kind of effulgence was coming out of this uh, his body. From this we understand that Krishna's effulgence is Brahman form. He resides in all of us, all of us living entities in 400 Paramatma form. And he is Bhagavan Swayam. So let's see further, a little bit more understanding. So absolute truth realized in three phases of understanding, right? We can take the example of sun. Srila Prabhupada explains in his uh, purpet, one of his lectures also, that there are three divine aspects. It can be explained by example of the sun, which uh, uh, also has three aspects, like sunshine. Sunshine, this is sunshine, right? So it can be uh, similar to Brahman realization. You, you are not, you are just getting that sunshine, sun, not sun exactly, but sunshine. So that's Brahman realization. So one who studies the sunshine only, that is the glaring effulgence of Bhagavan. He's just an introductory uh, student. He's just started. So he realizes the Brahman feature of Bhagavan. Next comes the sun surface. So the one who understands the sun surface or sun disk, he's... Uh, Further advanced, little bit advanced, more than the student who is uh, learning sunshine. He is advanced further. He can uh, understand sun surface now. So it is compared to the knowledge of 400 Paramatma form, who is in, within all of us in our heart. And then is the sun planet himself. So one who can enter the sun planet is the highest. And he can be compared to those who have personal, uh, who realize the personal feature of um, God. Bhagavan, Krishna. So the sunshine, the sun surface, sun disk or sun planet, they are not different from Bhagavan. They are forms of Bhagavan only. Initial is Brahman, from far off Brahman, closer by Paramatma. You go deep into your bhakti, you will. So Srila Prabhupada further explains that the, the bhaktas, the bhaktas, they have realized Bhagavan feature of the absolute truth. They are completely engaged in the study of absolute truth, right? So they know Bhagavan. They have gone personal. They want to engage in personal form of supreme truth. So let's move now to the next shloka. Yes, please. Who will want to read quickly? Vaishnavi Mataji, you had raised your hand. You can uh, read. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. As the embodied soul continuously passes, in this body, from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a chance. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. So we should not say, who am I? Who am I when we say? So we should not, we are a soul. We have a body. We usually say, I am a body. No, I'm not a body. I'm a soul. I have a body because body is temporary. Soul is permanent. That's why, you know, he says the answer to that compassion. Krishna answers, come answer. We are not the body. Dehi no sminyatha dehe kaumaram yavanam jara tatha dehantara prapti viras tatra namuhyati. So every living entity is an individual soul, right? We become child, then youth, then adult, then old age, and then we die. You can see in the picture. But the spirit soul remains the same. Spirit soul is not changing. You can see how the spirit soul is moving and moving from one body to other. The spirit soul remains the soul. Body is changing, right? So individual soul finally changes the body at death. When he is a baby, the soul is in the baby. When he becomes youth, the, the soul is in the youth. Same soul goes on till dies, and then it comes out and moves on into another body, transmigrates to another body. Since it is sure to have another body in the next birth, right? Either material body, spiritual body, you can become a devata also according to your merits. So there is nothing to be lamenting about or crying about, right? Arjuna need, need, need not worry about Bhishma or Drona, right? Because 
he should be actually be very happy they are very old bodies they will get new bodies rejuvenate their bodies they rejuvenate their energies right so bhishma and drona they are noble souls they are surely going to get spiritual bodies in their next life they are such superior souls so nothing to worry about nothing to feel bad about so arjuna stated compassion as a reason to decline fighting right so now what krishna says krishna answers arjuna by giving the knowledge that we are souls we are not bodies so let's see what happens to the soul as the body changes throughout our life what happens to the soul the soul does not change soul does not change a right a is the right answer yes correct soul does not change very good let's move on can soul be destroyed elaborate yes please who would like to read hari krishna yes sandhya mata ji the soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon nor can he be burnt by fire nor moistened by water nor withered by the wind beautiful thank you mata ji nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavakah na chainam kledayanti apah na shoshayati marutah very nice like all kinds of weapons swords flame weapons rain weapons tornado you remember when you used to see mahabharata and ramayana all, all kinds of weapons were being shot they nothing no weapon can kill our soul it appears that there are many kinds of weapons made of earth water air ether all these in addition to these modern weapons we have nuclear weapons we have in this modern age right they are classified as fire weapons but formally the weapons were made of from different material elements so many whatever it may be soul cannot be cut into pieces it cannot be annihilated any by any weapon whatever regardless of scientific devices shila propad in one of his lectures he said also that, that this is the distinction of the soul being spirit you can take anything in this material world it can be burned it's just a question of temperature he said even iron is being uh, burned metal any hard thing anything can be burned but soul cannot be burned so it means it's stronger than iron and stone right even though it's very small fragment fragmental very minute atomic portion a size of the soul is 1 10000 1 10000 part of a tip of a hair you take a tip of a hair this is the tip of the hair 1 10000 part of the tip of the hair that small but it cannot be burned so what is the take away here we cannot escape our miseries by exploiting or destroying our bodies suicide is not a not a thing nothing soul is ever going to live so nothing to worry about we cannot escape our miseries by exploiting or destroying our bodies <laughs> so miseries will go on you don't do bad deeds that's it right so let's uh, move on okay what is the size of the soul i just now mentioned what is the size of the soul quickly yes yes ritika mata ji correct it is c very nice 1/10000 part of the tip of the hair very good in chapter 2 the lord explains the procedure of bhakti that we are the soul not the body divine and demonic qualities and karma yoga what is he explaining yes yes ocean prabhu ji lucky prabhu ji oh so many very good all yes they are saying b that we are the soul not the body yes correct very nice let's see further now who will read quickly yes please whoever wants to read you can please raise your hands and uh, keep it raised so that i can give you a chance to read keep it raised only don't remove your hands don't lower your hands yes please yes vaishnavi mata ji hari krishna hari o son of kunti either you will be killed on the battlefield and attend the heavenly planet or will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom therefore get up and fight with determination Hare please read the above one also 36th one your enemies oh. your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability what could be more painful for you yeah shila prabhupada explains hari krishna 
so Srila Prabhupada explains in his lecture, you know, he gave one in London. There he said, Krishna says in two ways that if you don't fight, then your enemies are going to blaspheme you. They're going to talk very bad about you. So you you are very sorry, right? But if you are if you are uh, they speak bad about you, they defame you. It, it's better, you know, um, before enemies defame you, you better die in the fight. In dying also, you will not be a loser. Because hato va prapsas is swargyam means if you die, don't think you are a loser. Because immediately you will be promoted to heavenly planets because you are fighting for the right cause. You will become punyavan, right? Yes. So heavenly planet is meant for righteous people. So you will go there. So by dying also, yeah, by your death, by fighting, by righteous fighting, you will still attain heavenly planet. So in both ways, you will be profited. If you become victorious, then you will enjoy the kingdom. You lose, you go to heavenly planets. If you be um, um, uh, victorious, you will enjoy the kingdom. Both ways, again, you are profit, profit, uh, having profit. So there is no loss, right? So tasmat, tasmat uttishtha kaunteya, please get up. Yudhaya krita nishchaya, why are you sitting like a coward? Come on, get up, fight, right? So that's what Krishna says. Uh, yes, Asha Mataji, please, thank you. Yes, please. Asha Mataji, unmute yourself. Thank you. Shall I read Yes, yes, uh, Prabhuji, yes, sorry, Prabhuji, yes. In this endeavor, there is no loss of or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. Yes, Please. thank you so much, Prabhuji. So again, uh, Prabhupada, in his, uh, one of his lectures, he said that we do bhakti some way or the other, right? It has got a lot of effect when we do bhakti. And he tells a story that, you know, in a deity room, once a lamp was burning, and um, sometimes, you know, the wick that uh, we have to push it further, it goes down. So that lamp was almost going to extinguish, means uh, it's going to go off. In the meantime, a rat came over there and he thought it was some eatable. And so he touched the wick with his mouth and it got pushed. It started burning. Simply by that action, he got salvation. Just try to understand. Because he, he, he gave small service to the deity. So Krishna conscious business is also so nice, says Srila Prabhupada, that whatever you do sincerely, it will never be lost. It's permanent. Whether you execute 1%, 2%, 10%, 50%, 100%, if you can finish 100%, then next life you're surely going to Krishna. But even if you're not able to finish the whole course, whatever you may have done, that is permanent credit. It's not temporary credit. It will not be lost. So knowledge in Krishna consciousness is so whatever you are learning now, even in Bhagavad Gita, whatever spiritual activity you are doing, that is not going lost. But whatever you have studied from nursery to PhD, next life you have to start all over away again from nursery. I am thinking like I am I am a man or a woman or an American or an Indian or a Christian or a Hindu. These are all designations to the body. Body is finished. All these designations are all finished. We are actually spirit. Therefore, our spiritual activities will go with us. Material activities will not, not go with us. We are all spirit souls. So whatever spiritual activities we are doing, that will go with us wherever we go. That we need to understand. Very, very important that we need to understand. Yes, Sandhya Mataji. Sandhya Mataji. Yeah. Yes, please. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O oh, beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are ir irresolute is many branched. Yeah. Who is that in the picture, Mataji? Sandhya Mataji. Uh, Mataji, this is Dronacharya and Arjun. Very nice, very nice. Arjuna with Gr Guru Drona. He had strong, Arjuna had strong determination and under his Guru, he attained perfection in archery skills. Similarly, we also have to act firmly and obey the representative of Krishna. Accept the instruction of our guru. That should be our mission in life. To be successful in life, have firm resolution, determination as Arjuna, so that we can move towards Krishna consciousness. Yes, yes, please. Uh, Kiran Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. The Lord advised that 
sorry no small service done for krishna is ever wasted the lord advised that arjuna not be inactive but that uh, he perform his prescribed duty without being attached to the result yeah very very important uh, shloka kiran prabhu ji कर्मण्येवाधिकारस्ते मा फले चु कदाचना मा कर्म फल हे तुर्भु माते संगोस्व कर्मणि वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोक बिकॉज हियर दिस इज द आंसर टू डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फॅमिली ट्रेडिशन दिस इज बी अ रोल मॉडल सो अर्जुना वॉज एडवाइज बाय कृष्णा टू फाईट एज अ मॅटर ऑफ ड्युटी विथआउट अटॅचमेंट टू द रिझल्ट कर्मण्येवाधिकारस्ते मा फले शु कदाचना नो बी अटॅच टू द रिझल्ट so his even his non participation in the battle also it's another kind of attachment i don't want to fight is another attachment right such attachment never leads to the path of salvation any attachment whether it is positive negative that's the cause of bondage we will be again in that cycle of birth and death right and inaction it's completely wrong you you have to do action krishna never says sit at home he says action is karmanye vadikarasti you have to work you can't just leave you whatever duty is yours you must do it don't be lazy he never recommends anybody to laze around right he has, he says you have to do your prescribed duty but don't attach yourself to the uh, result that's what he says we have two duties one duty is towards our body like for example we take care of our body we take care of our family we take care of our job etc that's called swadharma taking care of our body that's one duty duty towards body is called swadharma second duty is towards our soul so we are doing swadharma we take care of our body we go to job we take care of our family we are doing our swadharma but what about the second one the duty towards our soul are we doing are we doing any spiritual practice are we doing meditation are you reading bhagavad gita are you reading scriptures that is the duty towards soul we have to chant lord's name we have to read bhagavad gita that is sanatana dharma one is swadharma second is sanatana dharma one is the duty towards our body family job etc and one is towards our soul every day make it a point we have all the time in the world for other activities except this that's what i have noticed ah what are the two duties who will tell hari krishna what are the two duties to a and b mata ji swadharma and sanatana very good very good very good a and b both swadharma and sanatana dharma swadharma is towards our body job and family sanatana dharma means towards our soul very good yes um asha prabhu ji would you like to read yes mata ji yes acha 40 55 56 half minute mata ji half minute i'll read from book mata ji i'll read from okay the blessed lord said are you sure uh, 55 the, uh, yes 55 years uh, but in my book it is written differently the supreme personality of god had said o partha when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification which arises from mental con- concoction and when his mind thus purified finds satisfaction in the self alone then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness read the next one also professor acha next one also right i think one who is not disturbed in mind even amidst the threefold miseries or elated when there is happiness and who is free from attachment fear and anger is called a sage of steady mind yeah thank you so much hari krishna so what did uh, uh, say uh, uh, bhagwan says he says in even in garur puran it's it is stated there is no end to our wants we are always wanting a king will want to be an emperor of the whole world and the emperor will aspire to be a, a, a devata or a celestial god the celestial god or the devata wants to be indra the indra the king of heaven right and indra will desire to be brahma the secondary creator so the thirst for this material enjoyment never gets satiated so sita dhir muni in the next uh, shloka sita dhir muni means what this is the sage who is already in that uh, able to control his mind as i explained uh, earlier also he has no concern for his own opinion or others opinion he is interested only in absolute truth what are the symptoms of such person he is interested in only absolute truth 
it, it, he accepts miseries. Even if misery is coming, he accepts as the mercy of Lord. Whatever you have given me, it's okay. He doesn't live in duality. Whatever you are given, happiness, sadness, whatever it, pleasure, pain, whatever it may be, I consider it as your mercy, Lord. And he, he says, whatever you are going to give me, even if you're going to give me severe punishment, maybe I have done something, misdeeds in my past. So that is what I am going to have. He becomes Thitta Dhir Muni Ruchyate. He is having steady mind, balanced mind. Thitta Dhir Muni Ruchyate means he is having complete control over his mind. See, look, who is that Thitta Dhir Muni Ruchyate? Who is that in the picture? Anyone? Ahalad Maharaj. Yeah, Ahalad Maharaj. Very good, Prabhuji. He was, he was tortured by his father like anything, but he remained sthitadhir muni ruchyate. Whatever pleasure, pain, whatever may have come in his life, he remained balanced. That is the example. Very nice. Yes, please. Um, uh, Tandya Mataji, Hare Krishna. Please unmute yourself. Hare Krishna. How can a supposedly harmless contemplation turn into an unsatiable lust and anger and cause one's fall? While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. And from such an attachment, lust develops. And from lust, anger arises. Oh my God, this is very, very important. This is what is happening in our life also, right? So Srila Prabhupada, in one of his lectures he gave in New York in 1966, he had said, he says we have to start thinking now that uh, we have to use this uh, time, this opportunity for spiritual perfection. We have got human life so that we don't suffer, you know, life after life we are suffering these in these material pangs. That is kind of determination we have. Otherwise, what is going to happen? That is what is going to happen. Then we become attached to it. Right? We attach to some material object or the senses get attached to that. And if the lust is not fulfilled, then we become very angry. I want this, I want this, I want this. You're not getting it. You become very angry. And if, if that is not fulfilled, you get angry. And by anger, what happens? We, mind is bewildered. We get, uh, forget everything. We, memory is lost, kind of. We just cannot think properly. The whole discriminatory power is gone. So actually, those who are very serious to get into the spiritual environment and enlightenment of life, we try to control our senses. Not by force. By forcefully you try to control your senses, it won't listen to you. It's very difficult. It runs away. Krishna says, uh, Arjuna says in chapter 6, Chanchala mihimana krishna pramati balavadhrudam It is so chanchal. It will, it's not going to be in, in our control. So how to control? By dovetailing, by regulating it in relationship to Krishna. Disengage your mind and engage your mind towards Krishna. Then our senses will be purified. So who is a stay, sage of steady mind? One who is not disturbed in mind. is free from attachment, fear and anger. Yes, please. Um, Rupa Mataji. Hare Krishna. Please unmute yourself and read. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. From anger, complete delusion arises. And from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. So Hare nice, Krishna. right? From anger, complete delusion. So by development of Krishna consciousness, one can know that everything that has its use is in service of the Lord. Like for example, I'm using the the laptop, the internet, you're using, you must be using uh, earphones, airpods, headphones, whatever we may be using to, to go through this Zoom session. We are all using, these are all material things, right? But we are using it for Krishna consciousness. We don't have to avoid it. We don't have to avoid anything if you are using it for Krishna. Similarly with prashadam, the devotee will take prashadam nicely in Krishna consciousness. He will offer it to Krishna and then as prashadam is going to eat nicely. But non-devotee, he rejects it as material. Oh, I should not eat. Oh, this will. This is not right. So in this way, non-devotee, therefore, he, he is not able to enjoy life. You cannot be very strict. Oh, I will not use internet. I will not use. Uh, uh, these are all material things, so I should not use it. No, no, no. 
no one is asking you not to use anything but use it in proper purpose take krishna's name it is in krishna's uh, krishna consciousness that we are using right so he will he just does artificial renunciation that is phalgu vairagya for this reason a slight agitation in his life comes or in his mind he will it, it it will pull him down even though he might be meditating but it will pull him down immediately to the pool of material existence right so there's no point we should enjoy we should have fun with krishna engage our mind with krishna eat krishna prasadam use all the material things give the result to krishna use it for krishna consciousness all the material things so if one performs the duty that is taking care of the body and the soul with determination and enthusiasm will be happy in this life itself right and in the next also nothing to worry about so we see in this thing like you see if you see number 1 object of the senses right you see how dhyayato vishayan punsa so the, the the mind is the senses take us towards our mind then what happens number 2 stage attachment sangaste shupa jayate then we get attached to that thing now what is happening lust is developing sangas sangat sanjayate kamaha so now lust is developing now if it doesn't get fulfilled what is going to happen kama krodho bhi jayate so anger is developed now anger is developed nothing is happening we get confused del in delusion mode krodha bhavati sammoha ha delusion we don't understand and then from there bewilderment of memory smriti bhramsha buddhi nashah so nothing is working out now properly right then what happens uh, uh, sammo hat smriti vibrama that is bewilderment of memory and then loss of intelligence smriti bhramsha buddhi nashah buddhi gets loss of intelligence and then we ultimately fall buddhi nasha pranashyati we fall so you know these are eight steps of failure like you can remember how to how you will remember this like you can always remember senses as s a as attachment l as lust a as anger so sala s a l a sala and then you can remember um sala then d delusion and um you know, how to remember memory m i loss of intelligence so you can remember you can put uh, dummy d u m i just put u for just to remember say i'm just trying to make something so that we can remember d u m i so delusion memory and intelligence loss of intelligence and then we fall so sala do me fall <laughs> i'm just making it making it up so that we remember like let's say let me give a crude example to you there is a wedding anniversary coming up okay so wife starts getting excited thinking about the surprise the husband is going to give her maybe it's uh, maybe 25th anniversary or something so he may be taking her to switzerland she just thinking so what does she do she starts finding information about uh, switzerland she goes on google and starts finding out she starts comparing with her friend who just went to nearby taj mahal maybe so she starts comparing oh i will be going to switzerland he is going to give me surprise and all so what is happening her sense objects it's getting attached now attached to that place now i have to go there we will be enjoying and all that now what is happening lust is developing now poor husband due to his busy schedule business meetings and all he has completely forgotten about her anniversary only let her let alone take her somewhere he forgot only so now you can imagine the state now wife is completely in anger soaking in anger right and then what is creating in an anger she does doesn't know she is roaming around in the house she is completely confused and in delusion she is moving around pretending to be buzz, busy but her brain is not working bewilderment of memory is happening in anger she is not able to remember to even cook also she is just sitting she can't even her mind is not going towards that then her intelligence is lost her intelligence goes out on a walk also means she refuses to you know she cannot discriminate between what is right and what is wrong wrong thought ultimately fall down she is crying miserably moving out of the house she is i'm going to my parents house now life is just hell you don't even remember this this is such an important uh, date for me 25th anniversary you have forgotten i don't want i don't want to live with you blah 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 chaos chaos so what is the take away from here we should be very very careful of damaging thoughts that come 
as soon as those damaging thoughts come in our mind, it gets converted into cruel plans. We start weaving up stories and then we end up doing something for which we are going to regret our whole life. We have to be very, very, very careful. We, we look at some object, we get attached, the lust develops. And if it's not fulfilled, anger develops. In anger, we get confused, delusion happens. And because of delusion, bewilderment of memory, the intelligence between to discriminate between what is right and wrong, gone, gone to dogs, and we completely fall down in misery. So that's what is here. From anger, what arises? Delusion. Yes, correct. Very nice. Delusion arises. Very nice, Prabhuji. Thank you. From lust arises. Anger, Madhu. Anger. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Very nice. Anger. Very good. Thank you. So now let's see this one. What did we understand in chapter two for sustained happiness? If you want to remain happy, so we should remember these eight steps of failure, right? What happens? And then we should go for higher taste. That is develop Krishna consciousness. If you are in so having some kind of crisis and how to manage it and you are not able to take a decision, always surrender to a superior authority. Now, who am I? What, we, what did we understand? We are not the body. I am a soul and I have a body. Body is temporary, but soul is permanent. So soul is going to remain forever. What are the two duties, two dharmas? One is towards the gross body, right? About what job, our family, responsibilities, etc. And the another duty is towards our soul. That is what we understood in chapter 2. So the summary, Arjuna did not want to fight because he said compassion. He gave the reason compassion. Krishna says we are not the body. He says there won't be any enjoyment. He says if you uh, die, then you go to heaven. If you win, you go to uh, you get the kingdom. Both are, uh, you know, no loss to you. Then he says fear of sinful activities. He says you are doing everything in devotional activity. It is not a sin. He says what about the family tradition? He says you have to be a role model. You should prevent uh, to prevent varna sankara. And he says I am not able to decide. So Krishna says you should serve the Lord with firm determination, right? So as a sincere student, Arjuna placed the matter before the before Krishna. And Krishna is answering very elaborately in third chapter in, as Karma Yoga. He says you have to work in Krishna consciousness. So the third chapter we'll be doing tomorrow. So let's see. If you are searching for happiness, read Bhagavad Gita. If you're feeling restless, read Bhagavad Gita. If you want to seek the meaning of your life, why have, who am I? Why did I come? What is the purpose of my life? Read Bhagavad Gita. If you want to be a better person, read Bhagavad Gita. If you, have, if you feel that you're missing something in life, read Bhagavad Gita. And if you feel lonely, definitely read Bhagavad Gita. That will really, really help you. So let's Vancha Kalpata Rukhyashtha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayavicha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishna Vebhyo Namo Nama. Let's all do Hare Krishna together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Kr